Welcome to the testing world. Previously we have seen how we can create base class, how we can set configuration files in data driven framework. Now I'm moving to the next section where is we are going to implement POM structure which is a page object model structure and for that we are going to create pages. First of all I'll explain a bit about the POM. So POM is page object model. This is a architecture style which says whatever the number of pages we have in our application like I'm working on a Facebook application. So Facebook has a login page, Facebook has a registration page, Facebook has home page. So whatever the pages we are having in our application, we need to create a class for each page. Like I'm going to create a class for the login page. I'm going to create a class for the home page. I'm going to create a class for registration page. So we need to create one class for each of the page which we are having in, in our application. Then all the activities that you are going to perform on each of the page like on login page my activities will be enter username enter password click on a sign in button click on forget password so we have a lot of activities now we need to create one method for each of the activity like if i'm creating a login page then i need to create one method for each of that activity like one method for enter username one method for enter password so we are creating a POM structure in which we have class for each of the page. We have method for each of the activity. So I'm going to implement that kind of structures for that. I'm, mov I'm moving to the my project and here I'm going to create one more package giving the name org dot automation dot testing word dot and I'm just giving the name pages enter so one package is created over here I'm going to create a class over here and giving the name login page so I'm creating a class for the login page now here in this login page I'm going to create a method for each of the activity which you want to perform on the login page for that I have opened my Facebook and I want to enter username, password, click on a sign in button. So whatever the activity you want to perform, you need to create method for that. I'm just coming here and creating methods like public void, enter username and taking one input, uh, one argument, which is username. In the same way, I'm going to create one more method, public void enter password and string password. And in the same way, I'm going to create one more method, public void, click sign in. And here we don't need any argument. Now I need to write coding inside these methods. To write code in these methods, First, we need driver object because the code which I'm going to write is going to work on a browser. And for the browser, we are going to create a web driver object. So one approach could be I'm asking for one argument, which is like this. I'm asking, send me the web driver object. I will use this web driver object like driver dot find element by dot whatever the element locator you, have, you want to use and dot send keys whatever the data you want to enter that is your name if you notice all these methods are going to work but only if we are getting the web driver object so all these methods required web driver object so one approach is that in all these methods i can define first argument as a web driver that could be one solution but that's not the good solution because right now i have three methods it could be we have 100 methods if we have 100 methods, we are going to pass this driver object 100 times. What could be solution? I am just creating one constructor over here. And I am passing this web driver object to the constructor. And 
I'm just removing this web driver object from here like this so I'm passing this web driver object to the constructor the value which is passed to the constructor is local to the constructor only so what I'm doing I'm declaring a web driver object outside the constructor so web driver object is declared outside the constructor as well now I want to transfer this uh, local object to the object which is a class member so I can write like this dot driver is equal to driver I'm going to explain this when somebody is going to create object of this login page class so he or she will pass the driver object when we are creating the object constructor is automatically called so the driver which is passed or driver object which is passed will be stored in this driver now I'm passing this driver value to global object so local driver object will be passed to this global object and now this global object can be used in all the methods so now I can use this global object in all the methods like this in the same way I am just writing the code over here I'll explain you one more time like this so now what I've done when somebody is going to create test cases of the login page he or she will create login page object when we are creating login page object he or she is going to pass driver object this driver object which is passed from the test case will be stored in this local object and in this constructor I'm passing the value of this local object to the global driver object which is declared here so this line is transferring local value to the global value and now this global because driver which is passed from the test case is driver object which is passed from the test case stored in this driver now we can use this driver object in all the methods so that's a very straightforward process one more update we need to do over here so here we have created three methods for three activities that we want to perform one is username password and a sign in and in the same way because I am on my Facebook home page we have login page we have a lot of actions that we can perform so we need to create method for each and every activity as of now I have just created for three activities one more update which is pending as of now if you notice my element locator are placed directly on the page we can improve this we can create a separate file in which all the element locator will be placed and we can use that file over here how to use that so I'm going to the config and inside this config folder I'm creating a file with the name elements dot properties here element dot properties file is created whatever the element locator which you want to place so I'm placing like login username ID is equal to and we can fetch element locator from here so I'm sure you have idea how to write element locators I'm just showing you how I'm fetching so ID is email so I just mentioned email in the same way login underscore password underscore ID and for the password box hello friends hope you are enjoying our videos and if you find this video is beneficial for you please subscribe our videos by clicking on this subscribe button after subscribing you will get immediate notification for all the videos which we are going to upload happy learning like this my id is equal to pass so i'm using this we can use any element locator so in the third place i'm using xpath here login button xpath and i'm generating the xpath by using this type is equal to submit so i'm coming here input at the rate type is equal to submit and hope you remember we have created a utility class so there i'm going to create one more method 
which is going to pick element locator so i'm just creating fetch locator value and again this is going to be in touch with this file that's element.properties rest of the code is same what i can do i know i need all these element locator in the string format so what i can do i'm just picking the value and returning in the form of object as of now i can convert it into the to string here and can return string from here itself so previously we have seen my method was picking the value of this key and returning in the form of object i'm just type casting that object to the string and returning a value as a string so we need not to change any value when we are using it so it's just a simple process we are just converting that data which you are getting from the property file in the form of string because all the element locator which we are getting that should be in the form of string i'm just coming here to my login page so here i need element locator so what i'm doing i have the class name utility dot which method you want to call so i want to call fetch locator value what is the key so my key is this i just copied it and pasted over here in the same way okay it's going for exception handling so i'm just adding throws exception we can handle it by the try catch as well but i'm just adding throws exception as of now and just copy this and using it here but this time i want to fetch value value of password so what i'm doing i'm just copying this and paste it over here okay and it's like this again it asked for the exception handling so i'm just adding this line here as well in the same way copy if you remember for the sign in we are using xpath so by dot xpath and what expression you want to pass so i'm just picking the xpath key and passing the key here it will pick the value from the property file again throws exception and it shows like one bracket is missing so i've done that so now one login page is created as per the pom structure and this is ready to be used in our test case so everything is done for the page point of view and we have placed our element locator in a separate file and that's again a property file so here we have seen two uses of the property file one for managing our configuration and one for managing our element locators we can have any number of property file so we can create it as per the requirement so here in this session we have seen how we can create pages we are going to use these pages when we are going to write test cases that's all we have for this session thanks for watching this video hi friends hope you are enjoying this video if you have any question regarding this video you can ask your question in the comment section also i would request you to please subscribe our channel you can subscribe it by click on this subscribe button for getting notification about all the new videos which we are going to upload on the daily basis also we are offering our all the video courses at very high discounted price we have 50 plus video courses which can be beneficial for you in your daily job activities if you are interested to buy any video course or all video course you can call or whatsapp us on this number also you can be in touch with us by using facebook linkedin or twitter Happy learning!